Uh, she loved it. Um, me that, that, that our Republican friends uh, are wanting to make so many radical changes. They want to take another fresh look at the 14th Amendment. They're, they're wanting to take a fresh look at other things that have been established law in this country. And our local congressman, when you read all of this stuff, he doesn't say anything about it. You don't hear any comments about it. I mean, you know, John, John Boehner says, well, we need to take a fresh look at the 14th Amendment. And Bill Rowe says, but you don't hear anything from him because he doesn't want to tell you how he's going to vote because if, if John Boehner says vote to take a fresh look at the 14th Amendment, Bill Rowe will say yes, sir. And if John Boehner says don't vote to help uh, 9 11 first responders with health care, as they did recently, Bill Rowe will say no. If John Boehner says, Phil, we need you to vote against uh, small business loans because we're against them because we don't want Obama to succeed, Phil Rowe will say yes. Sir. We don't have a representative from the 1st District of East Tennessee. We have a representative from whatever district John Boehner's from in Ohio. Because whatever John Boehner wants, Phil Rowe votes. Now, it don't matter that he represents East Tennessee. That doesn't matter at all. So, unemployment's, what, 13% some places, 14% in East Tennessee? Phil still votes against stimulus bills. Unemployment high, he's voting against helping his own constituents. John Boehner says, we won't have any earmarks. Phil Rowe says, I ain't going to give you nothing. Because John Boehner told him not to. Now they're, they're dancing around that earmark thing. I saw Phil Rowe the other day on TV and he said, well, you know, next year, the next Congress will have to look at earmarks. The problem is it's hard to tell what a good earmark is from a bad earmark. Jimmy Quillen would have said if it helps your district, it's a good earmark. Phil's forgotten that. I think what happens, what, what the deal is, is he represents a part of the Republican Party that doesn't know what it's like to have too much month at the end of the month. He represents people who don't know what it's like when you have to tell your kids no, you can't afford something. You have to park one of your cars because you can't afford the gas. You know, you have to, to struggle and decide when you go to the doctor because you can't afford to pay just to go to get something checked, you have to wait. You have to wonder. You have to get all your ducks in a row. I was thinking today about the estate tax. I was thinking, they talk about the estate tax, and they say, well, it's not right for people who have made all this money to have to give up what they've Built. Well, they're not talking about us because it doesn't kick in until quite high up there in the stratosphere. But they don't understand that if they're so against that, we have a system where my uncle died and his house had to be sold and his property had to be sold to pay for his funeral. That's an estate tax we don't need anymore because people are struggling. They can't make it. They can't even pay for their own funeral. When I grew up, we had beans and cornbread at least once a week because my dad was a truck driver. We didn't have a lot of money. 
We had beans and cornbread, and if you made enough of the beans, you put those in the refrigerator. Two or three days later, you brought them out, and you had them again another another night, and they were always better because beans sit in the refrigerator and all that. They're always better the next the next day or two days later. We know what it's like to to, to live within our means. We've tightened our belts. He wants us to tighten our belts further, and we can't. We can't tighten them any further. You know, we're, that's where we are. And he's not there. He doesn't represent people who are there. He represents the big interests. He represents the people with money. And no matter what his intentions may seem to be, that's where his sympathies lie. And that's where the Republican Party lies. So when he says, I've never seen the government create a job, come down here. There were plenty created with the stimulus money. They've got two brand spanking new bridges in Carter County that they couldn't have had without that money. And they kept that money in the county. And those people got to work. They put local people to work, built bridges to, in, to, to benefit the community. Bulls Gap, I believe, got a sewer system that they've been wanting to fix for years with stimulus money. It improved the quality of their lives, and it put people to work, and it kept that money local. Tennessee's just had a sales tax increase, or sales tax plus, again. I just saw that in the paper. I don't remember what the percentage is, but it was it was a plus. It was over the previous year for the second month or so in a row. Why? Because people have gotten some money through various incentives and stimulus, and now they're able to spend. And in a state like Tennessee, if people can't spend, the state doesn't take in revenue. If you look at a graph of jobs, in the Bush administration. It's an inverted arrow. And then you see it start to peak in the Obama administration. Are jobs coming back the way we'd like them to? No. Bill Rose says small business is afraid. Small business is afraid. They're afraid to, to hire. They're afraid to invest. If I had a congressman running around the district going, the sky's going to fall, the sky's going to fall, the sky's going to fall, I'd start looking at the sky. Because I figure he's a congressman, he must know what he's talking about. But, you know, we, we don't need to listen to Chicken Little. We don't need to listen to the negativism. Small business bill before Congress, Bill Rowe voted against it. Bill that, that helped small businesses and help local banks be voted <coughs> You look around this district and what, what is Phil Rowe's legacy in the first district of East Tennessee? What in his first two years has he done to make a difference in this district? I think that speaks volumes about his impact in Washington for us. However, I am certain that John Bain is quite pleased with the work. Now, there's a lot of stuff up in front of the Congress coming up. One of the worst things possible is Paul Ryan's new plan. The, the darling genius of the Republican Party has a new plan that will cut Medicare and will cut Social Security. It's essentially a rehash of Bush era. Oh, and including tax cuts for the wealthy. Again, more so than the Bush era tax cuts, which of course they want to continue. This election, that's, that will be on the table probably in this fall, but circling next year. Especially if Republicans gain back the House. We need to know, we need to know how Bill Rowe feels 
about Paul Ryan's plan to gut Medicare and gut Social Security. We need to know what he stands on that. We need to know it now. We need to know it before November. We need to know if he is going to once again vote with John Boehner and the GOP majority and gut Social Security and Medicare, ignoring the fact that a, a large percentage of people in this district need that to survive. And that's just one of many questions that we're going to have for Phil Rowe as this campaign goes on. Because he's not going to be able to be silent any longer on how he feels about these issues. So we need your help and we need your support. We're running outside of tradition. We're running outside of uh, Washington. We're running outside of it all. We need all the help we can get. We need getting people to the polls, getting people to vote early, absentee ballots. We need people to look at this as if it's one of the most important elections. And with Eddie and with Jack and with Nathan Vaughn and Kingsport, it's very important for the state of Tennessee anyway for people to turn out and to vote Democrat. We need your help too. If we're going to continue this country down a path that will lead eventually to prosperity, or whether we let Phil Road continue to represent Ohio. Thank you.